Well, good morning. Saturday the 31st of October, the church remembers with joy Martin Luther. Let's come to prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you, my soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 147 Praise the Lord. It's good to sing praise to our God. It is pleasant and right to praise him. The Lord is restoring Jerusalem. He's bringing back the exiles. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He has decided the number of stars and calls each one by name. Great and mighty is our Lord. His wisdom cannot be measured. He raises the humble but crushes the wicked to the ground. Sing hymns of praise to the Lord. Play music on the harp to our God. He spreads clouds over the sky. He provides rain for the earth and makes grass grow on the hills. He gives animals their food and feeds the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in strong horses, nor his delight in brave soldiers. But he takes pleasure in those who honour him, in those who trust in his constant love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. He keeps your gates strong. He blesses your people. He keeps your borders safe and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He gives a command to the earth and what he says is quickly done. He spreads snow like a blanket and scatters frost like dust. He sends hail like gravel. No one can endure the cold he sends. And he gives a command and the ice melts. He sends the wind and the waters flow. He gives his message to his people, his instructions and laws to Israel. He has not done this for other nations. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. 2 Kings 25, chapter, tw chapter 25, verse 22 to the end. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia made Gedaliah the son of Ahakim and grandson of Shaphan, governor of Judah, and placed him in charge of all those who had not been taken away to Babylonia. When the Judean officers and soldiers who had not surrendered heard about this, they joined Gedaliah at Mitzpah. Those officers were Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, Johananan, son of Kariah, Zariah, son of Tanahomath, from the town of Neptaphath, and Jezaniah from Marka. Gedalia said to them, I give you my word that there is no need for you to be afraid of the Babylonian officials, 
Settle in this land, serve the king of Babylonia, and all will go well with you. But in the seventh month of that year, Ishmael, the son of Nasaniah and grandson of Elishama, a member of the royal family, went to Mitzvah with ten men, attacked Gedaliah and killed him. He also killed the Israelites and Babylonians who were there with him. Then all the Israelites, rich and poor alike, together with the army officers, left and went to Egypt because they were afraid of the Babylonians. In that year, Evel Maradak became king of Babylonia. He showed kindness to King Joachim of Judah by releasing him from prison. This happened on the 27th day of the 12th month of the 37th year after Jehoiakim had been taken away as prisoner. Evel Moradach treated him kindly and gave him a position of greater honour than he gave the other kings who were exiles with him in Babylonia. So Jehoiakim was permitted to change from prison clothes and to dine at the king's table for the rest of his life. Each day for as long as he lived, he was given a regular allowance for his needs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thus says our God, I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her, says the Lord. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may drink deeply with delight from her consoling breast. For thus says our God, you shall be nursed and carried on her arm. As a mother comforts her children, so will I comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. You shall flourish like the grass of the field. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Thus says our God, I will comfort you, you shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 17 to the end of the chapter. The elders who do good work as leaders should be considered worthy of receiving double pay especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, Do not muzzle an ox when you are using it to thresh grain, and workers should be given their pay. Do not listen to an accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or more witnesses. Rebuke publicly all those who commit sin, so the rest may be afraid. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus and of the holy angels, I solemnly call upon you to obey these instructions without showing any prejudice or favour to anyone in anything you do. Be in no hurry to lay hands on people to dedicate them to the Lord's service. Take no part in the sins of others. Keep yourselves pure. Do not drink water only, but take a little wine to help your digestion since you are sick so often. The sins of some people are plain to see, and their sins go ahead of them to judgment. But the sins of others are seen only later. In the same way, good deeds are plainly seen, even those that are not so plain cannot be hidden. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us in the way of peace. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. 
to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. So, Lord, as we begin our prayers, we pray for Frankie, Frankie Scrivener and her husband, Sam, young and suffering from covid and we pray especially that you would not just touch both of them but you would touch sam now that you would resolve her he her breathing problems and bring her healing father as we think of sam we think of all those who truly are every day on the front line in care homes and we think of lisa and we think of Gabriella as they work in care homes and for all the care home staff this day and father as the situation gets worse we pray for those care homes who will be forced by the NHS to take people back or may they stand strong and resolute may they resist the naughtiness of the National Health Service in sending people back who are contagious who are suffering into a place where shelter and shielding is the order of the day so we pray for the residents of care homes at this time we pray especially for places like Meadowrith where dealing as a dementia specialist home the residents have less understanding of what's going on and see it as an act against them as a punishment Lord, we pray for the mental health of the residents of care homes as well as the physical health and we pray for the care home workers with their stress with the pressures upon them and lord for this low paid unskilled job well how i wish the prime ministers and others who talk about it in such tones such terms would go and have a day at being a care home worker and then they'll see how unskilled they are so Lord, bring your healing, bring your recognition, bring your protection. We ask in your glorious name, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, with 10,000 plus new cases a day, the last posted number being 24,405 in a day, counteracting this awful illness we pray for the nhs workers we pray for the army medical personnel and others who will soon be manning the nightingale hospitals who are doing so much in the background now we pray for all those who work in the nhs for the people who are most at risk, the porters, the cleaners, the phlebotomists, the people who visit beds and clean places where dust and potential for infection is most evident. We pray for nurses and doctors and for the radiographers and the physios, for the people who bring them in and out of hospital in the ambulance service, for the paramedics, for all who this day are 
standing on a, a front line that doesn't exist but is all too real father god as we pray for the health service we pray for the people who are grieving the loss of loved ones another 274 added to the death toll 274 families 274 groups of friends mourning the loss of a loved one so father god may they rest in peace and rise in glory Dona Reis Requiem, Lord, grant them rest eternal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for our older, our vulnerable, our at-risk friends and family. We think of Olive, we think of Olive Gardner, who is to return to hospital because she has an infection and at 83 fearfully may leave her home to go to Good Hope and maybe not return, not through death, but because care homes may well be on the cards after this trip. Father, we pray for Diane Murray. We pray for John Hambidge, who, <clears throat> with the lockdown tonight, and a minute past midnight, will find his carers are the only ones allowed to visit. And I thank you that we managed to break bread yesterday for one last go before the lockdown, in a small sense, begins. We pray for Stan. We pray for Philip and all those who, like us, here have the NHS app which says it's not a good thing to leave home and yet yesterday Lord even though we knew the death toll was rising playing my normal game of counting in my head I managed to get 27 people wearing masks and I stopped when I got to 150 not because numbers were getting too high for my poor brain to handle so lord the word is we will have a full lockdown by the middle of this week so that we might have christmas and the doctors and virologists say yeah don't talk about christmas yet let's get through november december january and february the danger months they call them father we may well come to a total lockdown but there's no point in having a lockdown if the people still go out still congregate don't wear masks and act stupidly lord we pray for this situation we pray that your peace your protection and our help will be there for all vulnerable needy at risk and frightened, isolated and locked in people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Father, I thank you that yesterday I collected drugs, spent time with a friend, a member of the church and a friend that we shopped in a PC world for one and shopped in Morrison's for another and that I went to a couple of other shops and to a couple of chemists after that and so many things. Father, I thank you that you give us the opportunity to get off our backsides and to serve. And as things get worse, as people lock themselves in, Lord, I ask that you give me the ears to hear the needs, eyes to discern the needs. And Lord, I thank you that the virus, you catch it or you don't, you come through it or you don't, but Lord, to live is Christ, to die is gain. I thank you that you call us to go into the lion's den, that we might be able to show that there is a God, a God who cares and a God who protects. And Lord, whatever the outcomes of 
us when we go shopping and the number of people over the last few months who've told me I was stupid and should stay indoors. Shield yourself, don't worry about others, they say, but if we didn't worry about others, where would this world be? So Father, we pray that we would have the courage, that we would have the common sense, and for those who really shouldn't go out, here I am, send me, Lord. Here we are, send us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, what can we say looking at the world news today, but Father, heal this broken world of ours. We pray for America, for two men, one of whom will be crowned as king of the world, but that's surely what Americans see themselves as. One doesn't seem as switched on, the other doesn't seem as truthful. Lord, we pray for America and its divisions, for its deceit, for its people carrying guns and its president encouraging people to prepare for violence. We pray for Europe, as across Europe lockdown is becoming the reality. We pray for France, as the French look with distrust at those from the Islamic faith. We pray for the elections around the world in Tanzania, in the Ivory Coast, for the tensions in Nigeria, for the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia, for the oppression and the deaths in Syria, for the increasing numbers in refugee camps in the Yemen. Lord, the list is immense, but we lay before you this world, for you know its needs. Be God. Raise up people of good, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those on our hearts and minds. Pray for my brother-in-law, Graham, and sister-in-law, and the whole family as they wait to deal with a kidney problem he has looking for healing or the donor lord i don't care we don't care we pray for julian and ashley and for nick as they pray for their dad and husband respectively father we pray for patsy for kevin for lizzie for Alan and Joan and Bob and Morag. We pray for the people we know who need a touch, for Maureen Williams as she continues with her discerning of her latest illnesses. We pray for those who are the anchors in their families. We pray for Jane Allen and people like that who stand in the gap and are there even though they must shield and stay safe themselves. We pray for the, the Maureens. We pray for Leah Sanford and her family and all their needs. We pray for Richard Kingston that you will keep him safe. And Lord, I thank you for a man who has shown integrity in his dealings. Seeing something wrong, he has pointed to it and said, is this right? Only to be pilloried and abused by so many. Father, we pray for all good people today, for evil happens when good people fail to act. Lord, the list is immense, the needs are intense and manifold. But we come together and we pray for the people we know and love. We pray for Sheila Pratt and for Norman and for the people of St Editors and the parish for Enid. Father, and we thank you for her, for Mary Wilden, for Molly Smith, Molly Jones, Father, used to be Smith. <laughs> oh, Father, as we lift our prayers to you now, touch us, touch those for whom we pray.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Father, as we draw our prayers together on the day when the church remembers Martin Luther, who changed our thinking and our theology, from a man who, in an uncertain and challenging world, stood but he could do nothing more than stand for your love, your grace, your faith and your word. We pray, merciful God, teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may enter the unfailing joy of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you all for being with us. May those for whom you pray stay safe this day. May you stay safe. And may whatever you do, may it be a blessing. And may you bless others. Take care, guys. Catch you soon, and if you need anything, especially as things progress, please don't hesitate to shout. I'm never too busy. I'm the second laziest vicar in town, and I'm never too scared because I'm just stupid. Actually, I'm only stupid because the world thinks that knowing and loving and serving Christ is foolishness. Let's keep on being fools for Christ, shall we? Take care. Bless you. Bye.